episode two of Custom Works. This episode, uh, we're going to be taking a break from being in the workshop. We're going to go into the office and we're going to look at the uh, the history of the car Dualitron. Now, a lot of people on Instagram have wanted to see this, uh, and I'm going to run through how I built it, the terrible conditions I built it in, and uh, we're going to look at the uh, at the finished car and the life it's had since I finished it, and uh, sort of how long it's lasted. So here we are in the office at Custom Works. Dualitron started out, um, I was just thinking of the easiest way I could build a custom car. I wanted to drive around looking like I had a cool lead sled, but I, did, I had no idea how to make one. I'd read a lot of car magazines for a long time and been really you know, into the custom scene. And I knew what I wanted to build, but I didn't know how to build it. So, first off, I thought, what car can I buy cheaply? and what car is going to lend itself best to what I wanted to do. And the car I chose was, the car behind me on the screen here, the Citroen BX. This isn't the actual Citroen BX that I used, um, and I don't know who these people are inside it, but it was beige, um, and it really did. It looked just like that when I bought it. So why the Citroen BX? Well, at the time you could cut the roof off a monocoque car and as long as you, uh, you, know, you braced the floor pan and braced everything, you were well within the law to do that. Um, sadly now, with um, chassis modifications being illegal, um, this car, if I built it now, would have to go through SVA. But at the time, why did I choose it? Well, first off, the Citroen B BX has an oddly long um, wheelbase for this sort of car. If you look, the wheels are right up here and right here. So I knew I could give this more overhang both ends and it not look too much like the wheels are in the middle. Also, this has got the, the just amazing Citroen suspension. There's three height settings on this. Even in standard form, you can almost sit this sill on the floor. So the car goes up and down. Um, yeah, basically, where can you get a running, a running driving platform with power steering and full air suspension for £200. You've got to realise at the time as well, I had no money. I had very little disposable income to build this car. So I thought, you know, it's going to have to be the BX. So how to build the car? Like I say, I drove, the, I drove this BX around. It was my only car and I drove it for about six months. So here is sort of Mark 1 way of making it. I decided on the shape. I've done a load of sketches, so I thought the best way to make this shape would be to form aluminium around a timber frame, a little bit like an aeroplane wing is uh, built. Also I chose aluminium because I knew this car would be built outdoors. This does look like I've got a garage here, but the car, it was very narrow, never would have fitted in there. So I, um, I thought I'll get something that doesn't rust. Uh, so aluminium and fiberglass was the way to go because I knew it just wouldn't rust away because if I'd built this car in steel it would have rotted away one end before I'd got to the other. So by this point I've braced the chassis and cut the roof off. I've started making the windscreen aperture which I made out of angeline and then just pie cut it, pie cut it and welded it and then welded it back to what was left of the uh, Citroen window pillows. There's another shot of it and the familiar sort of shape is forming. In the background here is a roof to the Citroen, the broken windscreen and all the other bits. Lots of this Citroen were made of plastic, which was quite weird. Again, another shot of the front. And you can see here as well that the Citroen front bumper was kept on. Um, a lot of this car was built around a timber frame and I could fix to this plastic front bumper really, really easily. So um, I, did, I did a lot of that. Moving on to the next slide. On this side you can see I've started to sort of mock up the form of the new door. Um, at this point I had no idea how to hinge the door. You can also see I kept these rear quarters of the Citroen because that's where the fuel filler was and there was some suspension mounting points there. Moving forward now, in this picture there's, there's some pretty shocking things going on. Um, so I've made a framework here using 8mm bar to make the curvature. This would, All of this is in aluminium as well because I found building the car outside, if I used any steel bar, it would rust within the filler and blow the filler out. So 
everything you see, these bits are steel and the way I braced the car, that was all in steel and painted. But I really didn't have to think because there was so much damp around. But I've used expanding aluminium mesh here and I've uh, fiberglassed over it to form the very, very complicated curve of the roof. As I also you can see, the rear parcel shelf in this car is made of timber and what I did I laid the wraparound windscreen in and then to get some sort of a rebate for it to seal to, I stuck loads of blocks of marine plywood around the bottom and then this was all covered in fiberglass. The tools I had at the time to make this part in steel was just so complicated, I had to make it like this and then cover it in, uh, in fiberglass. And sometimes, you know, if you can't make it in steel, steel is not the only thing that you build a car out of. There's a million and one ways around the problem, so always just think, you know, you've not got to do it exactly to the book. The thing to do is to get the cool car on the road and go and cruise. Uh, moving on, the familiar shape of Dualitron's coming in a bit more. Um, still got this square bottom part, which I, I got rid of, and as yet, no, no real fins. Ah, so, starting to get a little bit better now, all sort of in a, in grey aerosol primer and more of that shape coming together. I've made the scuttle panel, also this radius bonnet that comes to the V and the peak down the uh, bonnet up the split windscreen and into the roof starts to become more apparent. And here at the back you can see some of the framework that went in to brace the boot section the front with the original grill in, this grill was made from six, uh, the sort of beer pumps that you get in a pub. Um, I think, but yeah, I was doing some work in a nightclub and they were changing the pumps in the bar. So I said, oh, can I have them? I think they'd make a great grill. And there it is, there's the grill there. So moving on to this next slide, I tell you what, you look at this, you think, oh my Lord. I've started to bring the wings up as they should be. Again, everything is bonded. Everything was bonded with like a polyurethane um, sort of, of glue. Um, some of this did have some welded steel in just to give it more rigidity as it was being made. All of these forms, every single curve was just bent over my knee or a block of wood. And you can see there's a lot of timber holding all this up. This car is over 10 years old now and it's still going and it's being restored and it's all there and it's all still fine. So I'm saying uh, I'm calling a win on that one. So in this picture you can see the rear lights. Um, I really like this sort of teardrop rear light look and I've been looking at George Barris's car that he built in the 60s, the Buddha Buggy, and I thought, wow, yeah, that's what I've got to do. So using aluminium tube bent around my knee, I bent these in and then fiberglassed up to them. Moving on to the next picture, whoa! This is, this obviously when um, I'd been sanding all day and I had very shaky hands. But you can see the, I made this from scratch from a piece of plywood, uh, the Continental kit, and then I bent the alley around it and then tried to give this the sort of dome shape. And we have a door that swings. I always say with most of my cars, making, the, making a door from scratch you know, that takes all the time of the build, the rest of it's thrown together in an afternoon. Here's a shot from me standing on my garage roof. By now, we've got some sort of panel gaps going on. So yeah, the front arch on this is still Citroen BX. It's, I think it is, it's the only bit of Citroen BX bodywork that still um, exists on it. You can see here, it's quite interesting. The front of this bonnet, um, I had this sort of roll under and then a then I had like this uh, body line, this seam just here. Um, later on, I, I re-peaked and remade the whole front of the bonnet so that I didn't have to have this panel gap across here. If ever you can get away without having to do a panel gap, do it. Um, later on, we will see, ha ha. And just because I hardly took any photos, then we can see straight away that I bought the bonnet down and I think I used plastic drain pipe covered in fiberglass to form this front edge and then it got rid of that made the car look a little bit meaner at the front and here's the rear still not got the lights in but yeah we've got the shape we've got these bumpers we've you know we've moved into the final shape and if you look i've now removed the whole bottom of the car and made this sort of um rolled side piece that rolls underneath and the fender skirt um we've 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 moved on quite a lot since the uh 
since the last pictures. Swiftly through, again from my garage roof, I always like this taper in the roof. Um, this is off a 60s Vauxhall, this, um, this wraparound rear, rear windscreen. Here's the seats. Um, my wife, Kirsty, sewed, sewed these seats up on our kitchen table. Kitchen table just there. Um, we just bought a load of beige vinyl and some of this sort of quilted stuff that gives you the tuck and roll feel. Made some patterns and made those around the steel and timber frame. And da -da, the car is painted. Uh, this is when it first came back. This is a 2K um, satin black over the car. There's another picture of it. I do like this picture. It's not got the chrome trim and it's not got any wheel trims on. I think it just looks a little bit more badass there than it ever did. There it is in the street. Now again, we're back to a point when this picture was taken that I was, I was driving this car as my daily driver. I drove this car as my daily driver for well over a year. It was, it was fine. Scrape down on the smooth road and then, you know, just jack it up to get over the speed bumps. It was a great car and super comfortable. Inside I've got the interior, I did all the headline, everything was nice. I drove it when it was done for about a year and then I sold it to uh, who is now my friend. I didn't know the guy at the time, but I sold it to um, Richard who lives in, up near Scott's Corner and uh, he drove it around for a few years after that. My favourite picture of the car, I think, of, you know, of all time. Just looks so cool. And the name of the car, Dualatron. Duala, because it is two things. So it's like a 50s lowrider and a 1980s hatchback saloon car. And trunks, it's the end of Citroen. And now we come to the present day. So after Richard owned the car, Richard swapped the car for another car and the car moved on to another owner. And the car ended up, um, well, the car ended up just sitting in his back garden um, with the seized door latch and the water got inside and as you can see, it destroyed a lot of the interior and uh, yeah, I think it probably sat there for about three or four years. Um, and here it is being dragged out. Um, some, you know, so, some repairs have been made to the body because the body did sometimes, you know, you, you would get cracks in it. I'm not saying that building a car this way, you don't get some cracks, but it's sat in black so I could just patch them in and cruise around and, you know, I had the most badass car in town. Um, who cares how you get there, just as long as you look cool when you're cruising. And it seems that it was going to have a very sad end, but now, I think this is the last picture, no, here it is, in its new home. In FM Miller's, uh, I think this is at the side of FM's uh, garden, who owns his Miller's Speed Shop on Instagram. And he's built, wow, he's built so many cool cars, way more than me. But he's bought this and he's going to restore it. And uh, from this point, the rest of the story of Dualitron uh, moves over to FM really because um, that's it. This is all I can tell you. Um, I'm sure it's going to have a great future going around shows and uh, I'm sure you'll all get to see it in its new guise. And uh, yeah, now it's FN's car. I couldn't be happier. I don't think there's anyone better could be own it, could own this car at the moment. Um, so that's it. That's the duality so on story. on Custom Works, we're going to be looking at the standard ends I'm going to be taking out for a road test. We're going to be seeing if my suspension fixes work because last time, wow, that car rode really, really bad. And uh, we're going to be looking at what we're going to be doing to that in the future to correct the faults with the paint. And then the week after that, we're starting a major build here on Custom Works. You're going to get to see a car from beginning to end. We're putting Formula Tron on the back burner for a few weeks and we're going full in on a major build. So. Click the subscribe button, click the bell icon, uh, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you soon here on Custom Works.